Hi guys, this is Becca from Fire and Air Tarot, and I'm just going to be doing an unboxing today of the Star Spinner Tarot, which I'm really super pumped about. I've been waiting for this deck for a while. It got kind of held back because of the COVID thing, but it finally came in, so I'm really excited about this one. It has been called an LGBTQ-oriented uh, deck. Um, I think it's just a really lovely, diverse deck in general, so we're going to take a look. So here is the cover. And the artist um, is known for graphic novels and comic books, and I believe he is Vietnamese. So the artwork is really, really nice, and it has a lot of that comic booky feel to it. And it's got sort of a flip out here. This is magnetized, so a nice box and a nice ribbon for pulling out the cards. And then this is what the back of the cards look like. It's kind of hard to tell, but these are actually really nice and shiny as well. They're kind of iridescent, which is really nice. And I love this lavender color too. And then there is also a nice booklet. A nice thick booklet with all the cards inside as well. And yes, so the author is Trung Le Nguyen, I think is how you pronounce it but I'm not sure. He is a Philippines-born Vietnamese-American comic book artist and illustrator. And he lives in Minnesota with his partner and three chickens. He maintains a love of folklore and fairy tales. And so that definitely comes through in this deck, which you will see. All right, so let's get started with the Major Arcana. So we have the Fool. I really like how the fool is kind of in repose, sort of daydreaming rather than skipping about, um, not necessarily active like some of our fools are. The magician, great beard on our magician. The high priestess. I love this card, the empress. Gorgeous card. I love how all the backgrounds are really nuanced too and have a lot of details. The Emperor, also a really nice card. The Hierophant. And then for the lovers, there are four lover cards. Um, so we've got this one. And we've got this one. And we've got this one. And then we've got this one. So you could kind of pick and choose which ones you would want to include in a reading or um, have out in your deck that suits you or whoever you're reading for. The chariot, I do love this one. I have two cats, so I love the two cat imagery there. Fortitude or strength. This is also a gorgeous card. The Hermit. I really like this take on the Hermit. A little different than, you know, the cloaked wizardy figure. The Wheel of Fate. Justice. The Hanged Man. I love this death card. It might be one of my favorite cards in the deck. The death card. I think it's so unique. Also that baby angel is so cute. Temperance. I think this might be the first male temperance card that I've ever seen. Uh, which is pretty cool. The devil. If you look closely in the background, you can see the lovers are kind of chained up. There. Uh, the Tower. The Star. The Moon. Really nice. Love the little bunny. The Sun. So I like that the Moon and the Sun are kind of twins. Because usually the moon and uh, the sun aren't necessarily twin-like like that. Judgment. And this is also one of my favorite ones, the world. Really nice. 
And then all of the wand cards seem to have a fairy aspect to them. So here is the ace of wands. Two of wands, you'll see she's a little fairy. Three of wands. Four of wands. Five of wands, I really like this card. Six of wands. So also all the wands have this lovely yellow background. And this one's definitely reminiscent of Zelda. <laughs> So I think he has taken some inspiration from like comics and, and things like that or video games and things like that too. Seven, eight of wands, nine of wands. And then I think this is a really unique take on ten of wands too. Sort of a, a garden that you're tending to rather than like something you're carrying. Because burdens aren't always, you know, they look different for everyone. Page of Wands. Knight of Wands. Queen of Wands, which is an awesome card. And then the kings are always animals, I've found. So this is the King of Wands. Then in our cup suite, or chalices it's called, we have mermaid imagery. So, ace of chalices, two of chalices, three of chalices, four of chalices, five of chalices, Thought this was a pretty unique take on five of chalices. Six of chalices. Seven of chalices. Eight of chalices. Lovely card. I love the composition of this card. Uh, nine of chalices. and 10 of chalices. And one thing that my husband actually pointed out to me, because he sat with me the first time I looked at this deck, um, was the movement between these. So we've sort of got the mermaid, and then maybe our mermaid is coming out of the water. And then our mermaid is actually learning to dance and, and kind of using her legs. And then in the last one, our mermaid has completely transformed and has wings. So I thought that transformation was pretty cool and I was excited that he pointed that out to me. Uh, we have the page, really also an awesome card. See the little puppy? And the knight of chalices. Queen of chalices. And then we have a dragon for our king of chalices. Then we have our swords. I couldn't figure out if there was a specific mythical or folklore thing going on with the swords that was specific to swords. So you can see if you find one. Two of swords. Three of swords. Four of swords. Five of swords, six of swords, seven of swords, eight of swords. I do like this one with the demon. Nine of swords. And then I like this Ten of Swords because the creature looks like a phoenix, so although he looks defeated, we know that he will rise again. But yeah, there didn't seem to be a specific theme like with the others, like mermaids or fairies with the swords. Page of Swords. This is also one of my favorite cards in the deck. The Knight or Knave of Swords. Page of Swords. 
Love that card. Pretty badass. There are wings showing up at some points in the swords. Queen of swords. Also pretty cool with that uh, white snake and the rose petals, and one of them is kind of in her mouth. I don't know. That's pretty cool. And then another animal for the king of swords. And then we have pentacles. Ace of pentacles. Two of pentacles. Three, of course they're called coins here. This one's kind of cool because it's sort of a card that's reversible. Four of pentacles, that sort of reminds me of Rapunzel, that Rapunzel energy. And then this one sort of reminds me with the mirror, the cracked mirror of sort of a, maybe a Snow White. Five of pentacles or coins. Six of coins, I love the strawberries in this one. They're so cool. I really like this take on the six um, as well. Seven of coins. Eight of coins. This one's kind of interesting because it's more modern. Like his outfit is very modern and he's looking at the clocks and a lot of these other ones are more fairy tale-ish. So I thought that was interesting. This one's really nice with the owl. Nine of coins. Or sorry. Did I skip one? No. Nine of coins. No. Yes. Sorry. I'm losing my mind. And ten of coins. If you like 1920s stuff, I like this card because of it's very great Gatsby. The page, the knight, and then this is a really nice card, the queen, their bunny, and the knight, the king is the bunny. So maybe that one's last, the last one seemed to be maybe more just like fairy tales, um, like Beauty and the Beast, Snow White, Cinderella, like maybe more that kind of thing, like princes and princesses. Um, but yeah, the swords was the only one that I couldn't figure out if there was a theme, but there are a lot of wings in the swords. So maybe the wings have something to do with it. It is an air suit, so maybe wings make sense. But yeah, it's a really cool deck. I would definitely recommend um, getting yourself one if you are into that. I think the artwork is really phenomenal. And, of course, it's awesome that it has so much diversity as well. And um, I'm excited to shuffle these babies up and add them to my regular rotation of decks. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys.